Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. This is the first episode we're going to be looking into Svelte, and specifically Sapper, which is kind of a framework for Svelte. Um, if you're unfamiliar, you can go to svelte.dev. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at the Sapper website, and we can look a little bit at the Svelte website as well. Um, but I'm mostly going to just lead you through creating a basic project, following the very simple instructions on Sapper's homepage and just take a, take a look at the uh, overall structure of the application, and then we're gonna start building a Sapper application. Now, we have been working on Rails recently, and that's all API-based, so we don't have a front end yet for that. So what we're gonna be doing is using Sapper and Svelte to communicate with the Rails API backend and display our data and whatever. Um, similarly, if we're gonna do some things in the future, possibly with Flutter, as a mobile app to also hit that Rails application. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I just want to show here is this is the Sapper website, sapper.svelte.dev. It says the next small thing in web development. It's powered by Svelte. It's fast, etc. It provides server-side rendering, code splitting, offline support, etc., and routing. It's extremely simple to get set up. I'm assuming you already have uh, Node and everything like that set up. Um, and then you can just follow their instructions. So they have, if you're gonna use rollup, um, npx digit, and then their template here with uh, rollup, otherwise Webpack, CD into that application, npm install or yarn install, and then npm run dev, and then go to localhost. This is what the uh, introductory template system looks like. So we have a page here. You can test out their live reloading. We'll do that momentarily. This is an about page and a blog. And like I said, it's server-side rendered, so we can refresh and everything is right here. And there's some blog posts that they just put within this. And you can see, we'll take a look at how they're dynamically generating their slugs and um, how their system is set up. So let's go, without further ado, let's take a look at the code. So here we go. This is their readme, and I've already run all of those commands to install everything. So let's go ahead and take a look at their code here. So close out of this, and here's our application. So first thing to note is we just I'm using Webpack. Um, we have a very simple package, JSON. That is generated. Uh, you could take a look. It comes with uh, Poco as the server. It's very simple. It runs just a few different commands. Um, I'm running dev. Uh, there is a build command and then as well as an export command. We'll take a look at those in a future date. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. Static is going to be files that you want to reference, um, like images and um, your favicon, etc. Source, this is going to be where your initial template is. So you can see here, let's just open that and make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. So this is going to be the base of the application, whether it's forward slash or if you want it under something else. You can see I'm referencing the global CSS and manifest as well as favicon. Those are all the files that were in that static folder. And then we have a script here, and it says Sapper creates a script tag containing the client and anything else needs to hydrate and initialize the router. It has a style tag containing critical CSS for the page, and the rest is lazily loaded. And then finally it says, contains the contents of Svelte head if their current page has one. And then finally we have our application. So let's go ahead and look a little more. It comes with uh, a service worker, and so it has built-in functionality for uh, progressive web apps. Server is gonna be the backend server side of things. So if you want it to be rendered by Poco, you can, or you can replace that with Express. Um, now this is only if you want it to be a server side application. Of course, um, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have the ability to do an export and build. And what that will do is that'll set it up as a static site. So we can actually run this as a static site if you wanna pre-generate things. And then here's the client. It does have TypeScript uh, functionality built in. So we can do things with TypeScript. 
And let's take a look here what else we have. We've got scripts. It's going to set up TypeScript for us. We don't really need to adjust or do anything there. And now the main two things that you want to pay attention to are components and routes. Node modules you should be familiar with already. So routes are going to be basically where each thing lives. So if you're at the home page, that's going to be just the basic route index. And if you want to go to forward slash about, that's going to be the about page here. Now we have this subdirectory called blog. So if I click on blog, you could see that it renders, and this is going to be the index for this blog. Within this, um, we're going to take a look at some of this code momentarily. We also have another Svelte file called slug inside of these brackets here. And what that's going to do is it's going to be replaced by this section here. This is how to use Sapper or why the name or what is Sapper, etc. So that will be replaced. Um, we also have JSON here. Uh, so if we wanted to go ahead and have the JSON views, we could do that as well. Now the other thing to note, let's go back to the index here. And you can see we're going to import the success kid picture. We have a script section where we can use uh, JavaScript. And we have two different types of scripts. I'll come to that in a moment. We have a style section. This is to load that critical CSS again. And now these styles are going to only affect this file. Um, so you, even if you bring in an, an H1 tag from another component, that won't be styled by this. So it's really, really nice to keep all your things isolated so you never have to worry about collisions and anything like that. This is that Svelte head section that I mentioned here. So in this instance, they're going to set the title to separate project template. And then we have a little bit displayed out. Going back to the about page, it's also very similar, but the only difference is to change the title. And so you could see the title here is about versus here is the project. Now we can go ahead and take a briefly look. We have this other two files, one's called error and one's called layout. Now, anything that's underscore layout here like this is not going to render as a template itself. So you can't go to underscore layout. But the layout name itself is a special name. And anything within this folder will take that layout on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to import that nav component. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at it now. So you could see it's export let segment. I will explain that in a moment. Then we have some styles for this navigation. And then we have three different link tags. Uh, we have a link here where we're checking the segment and setting if it's current or not. And what the URL is for this, the about. And then finally, a third one for the blog. So. The segment is a special provided um, variable from Sapper that says what is basically the path we're on within this section here. So are we on about, are we on slash home or index, are we on blog? And we can use that and that's provided by the layout. So we, we automatically get it in the layout and we are passing it down as a prop to the nav. And so then within the nav, we can use that to check, hey, if we're undefined, that means we're on the home page. If we're on the about, we know we're on the about page. And if we're on the blog, we know we're on the blog page. We're setting the ARIA current here, but you could set any kind of style or CSS if you wanted to have it you know, automatically underlined like it is here. So this is where they're using ARIA current to show, hey, we are setting these, this underlying redness. And there's different ways you could do that. So again, back to the, the layout here, we're reporting that nav and we're passing segment to it. And then we have a main section. And within it, we're going to call slot. And slot is basically a way to uh, render components within this. So it's going to be basically any, th this entire file is slotted 
into that layout. So from here all the way down, similarly, this whole section here, et cetera. So any of the HTML. Um, now within blog, these are also rendered by the, the main layout here. If we went ahead and put in a different layout file within the blog, then we it would use that instead. But right now it's just gonna use the uh, one up of it. The error file, just real quick, if we are throwing an error on the page, this is what's gonna end rendering instead. And this is just basically a way for us to see um, what our stack trace is. Of course, we're checking that we're in development mode before we show everything. Otherwise, we're just gonna show something like um, 404 or some kind of other error. So if I went up to here and I went to like this, I added the one to the end, it says 404. So that is how that is rendered. So that's this H1 here and this P tag. And if it threw an actual stack trace error from um, some kind of something blowing up, it would display the stack trace. So going back to the blog now, let's take a look a little more detail how this is, this is rendered. So I said there was two types of scripts tags earlier. The other one is Chemtex module. And this is basically going to run before everything is rendered. So we have a special function in here called preload. And what this is going to do is it's going to, um, in this instance, we're going to run fetch. And it's going to take those JSON from this file and then return that as an exported um, variable. So as I mentioned here on the nav, we have export let. We need this export to get things in as props. In this instance, this is passing and preloading in props, and we're calling it posts. And then so to get those posts from this uh, module here, we need to go ahead and export let the posts. So if we wanted to rename this to something else, we could, we'd have to rename it down here as well. To take a look at that blog.json real quick, um, that is this index here. And it's gonna import the posts, take all the contents of those and return the title and slug, and then return it as uh, application JSON and render that out. The posts, of course, are the very simple blog articles here with title, slug, and HTML. So the nice thing about all of these is you could, as you saw on that last page here, we're gonna go ahead and um, let me load this page here. We're only taking the title and the slug, but when we wanna load the actual page on the slug here, it has its own preload and it's gonna do a couple of awaits. It's going to await the function and get the blog for that slug. So it's gonna get blog slash slug. So let's take a look at this. So this is gonna import each of the posts and uh, loop each of them and set a map with the slug and then the post itself. And then when you take a request on this, it's going to look it up by the slug. And if it finds it, then it's gonna go ahead and say it's a 200. Uh, get all the, the information for it and write it out. Otherwise, it's going to write it as a 404 with the not found. So then that's a, a nice easy way for us to get access to that information within there. So back to our slug here again, we're going to grab that information. And then once it's ready, if it's a 200, we're going to render it as the post. Otherwise, we're going to uh, render that error page. So this is the error layout right here. So this is a nice, easy, convenient way for us to render that out, this.error. Again, we're gonna grab that post. So if we called this data or something, we'd have to change this to data down below. We have a little bit of styling um, that we're applying. And then we're gonna go ahead and set the svelte head again with the title, the title. And then finally, we're gonna use a little uh, at HTML here to display the HTML as HTML. And I don't recall offhand if that is provided by Svelte. I believe the at HTML is. So this is the application. It's very simple. If you look at the docs, so we're gonna glance real briefly here. The docs seem, uh, not only see, it may seem long, but it's very, very, very short. Uh, it takes just an afternoon to read this. Um, even shorter and better is the Svelte website. It's got a fantastic set of docs under their API here. Um, again, it seems long, but 
it's pretty short ultimately. I highly, highly, highly recommend clicking on tutorial and going through the entire tutorial. It's a, a fantastic way to learn Svelte itself and it doesn't take very long, maybe a few hours. And um, it'll just kind of blow your mind. It's fantastic. I will be getting into a lot more as we build out our application, but I just want to make sure you're aware that this stuff exists. If you're not already, always go to the docs first. It's going to be the fastest, uh, easiest way for you to learn um, a new language or whatever. So that's it for this particular episode. We're going to keep on digging in and building out both our Svelte application as well as our Rails application. And we'll be mixing in a few other uh, tutorials and videos in between to cover a few other things like Tailwind and some Postgres stuff, etc. I'll talk to you guys next time. Like and subscribe. Thanks.